All right, here we go. Are we going to waste time? No. Let's just get right into it. One of our favorite characters on this channel, Benny Pepino. Him and some other guys are whining and complaining about Captain America or something. I don't know. Here we go. So it's not just the areas of the White House or the media or corporate America or even the law where the left feels its oats. They feel ascendant, but the backlash is coming. It's in the area of culture. They're going way, way too far in the culture. So, for example, Marvel for some ungodly reason, for some reason that no one can comprehend, decided that it would be a wonderful idea to have Ta-Nehisi Coates write Captain America comics. This makes no sense at all. Captain America's character is a character who was frozen in the 1940s. No. And then reanimated years and... <laughs> Wait, we gotta, we gotta back up a little bit here. Hold on. ...in the 1940s. And then reanimated... Okay, let's not eat lunch before we film our uh, segments. Okay. Hey, here we go. Years and years later, he's supposed to be a refugee from 1940s America. Rah, rah. That's why he's Captain America. Right? He's supposed to stand for all of the values of. <laughs> OK, so I think you kind of get the picture here. Uh, <laughs> I would urge Ben Pepino to just do a quick Google search on the first the Jack Kirby. Uh, and by the way, any anybody out there who's not a fan of Jack Kirby uh, watching this, you know, just unsubscribe, I guess, or whatever. But uh, go ahead and search what's the first issue of Captain America. Just look at the cover. That's all I'm asking you to do. Okay? It's uh, Captain America punching Hitler on the first one. Jack Kirby the Great. Uh, but also, it's sort of funny that he's talking about this because just like a couple months ago, Jack Kirby's son... Uh, wrote an article because I think some of the Capitol storming people were wearing like Captain America shirts or something. And he went on this. And remember, big uh, Benny Pepino, huge Trump supporter. Uh, Jack Kirby's son went on a huge thing about how how Captain America would have is like would have aided Trump and all this stuff. So. <laughs> so, OK, so there's that. Right. No. The other, of course, funny thing about this is he's whining and complaining about Ta-Nehisi Coates doing Captain America. Um, this comic, this, this, uh, <laughs> he might have wanted to do a quick clickety-clack on this one. He's been doing that comic since 2018. And I'll read you just a little review. By the way, also Amazon, not too bad. He asks, this was a huge mistake letting Ta-Nehisi, letting Ta-Nehisi do, do this. It's got a very good rating on Amazon. People seem to like it. You know why? Idiot, dummy, who doesn't... The, all these guys, and we'll look at this quartering guy in a second, too. All these guys want to pretend to be comic... Oh, we're comic book fans. Yeah, we're comic book fans. But they don't understand the very dumb, basic premise that uh, comic books... You, peop, the writers and the artists are doing their own interpretation on a template character. It's like the basic understanding of why anyone would read comics. And they're like... Tanahisi shouldn't be allowed to do anyway. Here's a little review from uh, somebody asks: Is Captain America by Tanahisi Coates any good? And this guy writes: I like it. I think Coates has a unique voice. His Steve feels like a fully developed character, <laughs> and he writes Sharon very well. <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, I don't know why I like this. Well, another person said. Uh, like another person said, it's very much inspired by Brubaker's run. And Ed, I never kn- knew how to say his name, Ed Brubaker or, or Ed Brubaker. And Ed Brubaker is one of like the great comic book guys out there. Ed, Bru- He's done a bunch of like darker stuff that's kind of interesting, but uh, his Captain America is very good. And by the way, you might want to check out too, Ed Brubaker did a, a thing called Gotham Central which was all like it was Batman told from the perspective of the Gotham Police Department. This is what comics are about. You do you dolt, you idiot. It's people telling from different perspectives. And suddenly a guy comes out and he does his spin on Captain America, which, by the way, it, there, people are like, oh, it's, he's, it's inspired by the Brubaker stuff, which everybody's like, oh, yeah, this is kind of like your basic Captain America is what Ed Brubaker did. And Ed Brubaker did some really, I, I think, interesting stuff with Captain America. But uh, he's like, tanahisi has gone too far. Tanahisi. By the way, I'm just finding out about this because I'm too much of an idiot to click that the guy's been doing it for three years. 
Unbelievable. The level of stupidity on these guys. I'm 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 really laying down some real some real he, hot takes here. Some heaters of takes uh, that Ben Pepino's not a bri a brilliant mind on YouTube. The United States. Among them are not. America is a deeply racist country plagued by 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 structural injustices. America's <laughs> Except that the very first issue was uh Captain America punching a Nazi. Ordinarily <sighs> famous by talking about how terrible America is, he should write the Captain America comment a comic. So on its face, this is an absurdity. It's an absurd, it's like having Noam Chomsky. <laughs> Wait, I thought what what happened to the free market? What happened to the free market? People seem to like it. What is this? What do we got? 334 ratings, almost five stars on t on this Tanahisi Captain America. I don't even like, you know, quarter million views in one day. <laughs> so if this, I mean, it's so stupid that it feels like I'm like, hey, I'm going to go argue with like the dude on the on the train who's just yelling. That's what I feel like when I do these de de debunks of this guy. No, 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 no. But then I look and I'm like, oh, quarter million views, huh? <laughs> okay, I guess I'll do a video on it. Okay, here we go. Now we get into the real meat of the thing. Really are. So Tana Hussey Coates put out. Because Ben Pepino is like, a, you know, on Twitter too much or something. Here we go. This comic. The comic shows Red Skull recruiting people online. No. Uh, you know where this is going, don't you? Recruiting red, uh, recruiting people online, Red Skull. Right. No. Who's a Nazi? No. And red Skull, as a character, is a Nazi who had his face burned off and he's, like, and he's now a mutant and all this. Okay, and here is the panel. It says the Red Skull. It is a picture of the Red Skull on a laptop, and it says, 10 rules for life next to his face. Who do you think that's supposed to be? 10 rules for life. Could that possibly be uh, Jordan Peterson? Just to reiterate the point, just to make sure that you know it's supposed to be Jordan Peterson, it then says in the corner, chaos and order. No, because of course, Jordan's books are all about leading a, a finding order within the chaos. So the idea is that Jordan is a Nazi. No. Hey, that's absurd on its face. It's absurd. It's slanderous. Honest to God, it's 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 disgusting because ta Coates Coates is just a damned liar. So I know Jordan. <laughs> I mean, my honest to God, like my uh, just spontaneous view of Jordan Peterson is the first is like, why are we still talking about this guy? That's number one. I thought this was a fad that would last like a couple months in like 2016 or whatever or 2015, really. Um, why are we, that would be my first thing. How is this guy's, how is this guy still moving books on Amazon at the rate he is? And how, <laughs> how has he remained to stay in the spotlight is almost kind of, uh, amazing. My personal thought of him, like watching, you know, watching the, his little arc and all that is just that he's kind of a grift, a, a, a shameless grifting weirdo, a shameless grifting Canadian weirdo. That's like my, if I had to really like, you know, gun to my head, like what's Jordan, that would be it. And kind of a YouTube grifter. I think he just follows the uh, the clicks. But just to take this a little bit seriously, if we look in the comments, somebody's like, you know, this is how many we got. Uh, okay, we got a couple, couple illustrative comments here. Red Skull's latest bit of vile demagoguery. Quote, pet a cat when you encounter one on the street. So that's one. 319 up upvotes. Take responsibility, clean your room, keep order in your life so you can be a positive function, functioning member of society. Red Skull. Oh, burn. 569 uh, upvotes and 10 replies. And I actually, like, years and years ago, I worked with a guy who was a big fan of Jordan Peterson. And I would hear this kind of stuff of, like, he's just a self-help guy. It's a very weird thing because it's like, how about you do a couple more clicks on Jordan Peterson when you get into the race and IQ stuff? <laughs> you get into that, and then you get into the climate denial stuff, and then you get into the I'm not sure if gay people should be able to get married stuff, and then you get into the I'm not sure if men and women can work together stuff. I mean, this is stuff that we all kind of know, but it's just funny to see these people like, <laughs> just like the laziest bad faith argument. He just wants people to pet cats. Uh, yeah, what about all this other stuff? I don't know. I don't know. No, no. He's my grandpa. No, he's not a kindly old grandpa who wants you to pet a cat. He's a weird YouTube grifter. 
He's a weird old YouTube grifter. And you know what? If you're Ta-Nehisi Coates, uh, I can totally empathize with uh, being even more creeped out by by uh, Jordan Peterson than I am, honestly. And um, you know what? Jordan, This guy, Jordan Peterson, one of his big things is like, you have to be a, a tough guy. You have to, men have to toughen up. Boys have to toughen up. Okay, then shut up, you idiot. Somebody made a comic where they reference some of your dumb crap that sells millions of books. Shut up and take your lump, you old goof. Calm down. You're you're shoveling in money for doing nothing, you know. Oh, by the way, the he got famous by doing like anti-trans stunts. So he went and testified in front of the Canadian uh, government, where he's like, "Oh, if 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 there's a, a if you add trans people to a protected class, society's gonna fall apart." By the way, uh, they did that, and it's fine. C- Canada did not uh, break off into the ocean. So quit whining and complaining. You know, you got famous, you got your little stupid attention clicks by saying, uh, you know, let's just say Nazi adjacent crap. You go- you goose stepped around YouTube and now somebody's uh, giving you some crap about it. So shut up, you old dork, you nerd. You're an old nerd. And look at this guy. By the way, go watch Jordan Peterson's like intro video, like with this like classical music playing. Oh, Jordan B. Peters is like the most like. The, just like the mo- the least fun person on the planet. So shut up. Calm down. Some guy referenced you in a comic. He trolled you and he took the bait. You dumb dorks. You nerds. You goofballs. I mean, everything with these guys is about attention and PR and marketing, too. So, you know, they're going to juice this thing out. Kind of like I am, honestly, right now. But they're gonna <laughs> But they're going to juice this thing for, you know, all it's worth. If, if it was really, if this guy, Jordan Peterson, really believed all this t- toughen up stuff, he would be like, well, the guy thinks, uh, you know, the guy has his opinion on my work. Uh, well, the, g- good luck to him. That's that's the attitude. If somebody got, uh, you know, was talking about my channel and they're like, this guy, look at his stupid forehead and look at the things he, he's making fun of people with. He's making fun of Daily Wire videos. Oh, that's never been done before. I'm like, yeah, OK, fine. Good for you, thank you, then don't watch. I've watched many of his videos, as you have, I'm sure. The notion that he is pro-Nazi is insane. It is insipid and it is ridiculous. But the Red Skull is a Nazi and is actually Jordan Peterson in this comic, directed toward teenagers. No. And then there's this other conversation that happens about how Red Skull is recruiting people. No. In, In which Captain America says, it's the same for all of them. Young men, weak, looking for purpose. I found the flag, you found the badge, they found the skull. He tells them what they've always longed to hear, that they are secretly great, that the whole world is against them, that if they're truly men, they'll fight back. And bingo, that's their purpose. That's what they live for. And that's what they'll die for. So if you. Oh, no. You mean a writer? You mean a a politically aware writer worked some stuff from uh, out there in the culture into his work? Oh, no. Oh, what a shocker. What an amazing shocker. And also the other thing with this, he's going to get all worked up and pee his pants about this. I mean, what do, what do you want us to say? Sorry that your guys' ideas are kind of Nazi adjacent. I, I don't know. What do, what do you want? What do you want us to do? You want us to put a, you in your crib, go bed, 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 give you a little kiss? I, I don't know what. What do you need? Do you want little cut up celery sticks with peanut butter on them? Will that make this fix this? I don't know what to do here. You tell young men that they have a purpose in the world. If you try to tell young men not to pity themselves and be losers, if you tell them to make their bed. This is this makes you a Nazi like Red Skull. Tanahasi quotes writing that it truly is like odd to keep it. It does because to me again, Jordan Peterson is just sort of like a shameless grifter, didn't he? Wasn't he like selling his rug like he had some rug with his like goofy logo on it, <laughs> and he was selling his rug for like a pile of money. He's just like a a grifter. You he's just like a YouTube clickbait goofball, and uh, that's my opinion of him. But when these guys are like, he's just trying to help young men. He just tells them to clean their bed. When they do that thing, then I st- it starts to really rub me the wrong way. And I really want to dunk Jordan Peterson's dumb Canadian head in the toilet because of all the other crap that they're kind of shuffling under the rug. Like, look, the dude, just be upfront about it. The dude was into race and IQ stuff for a long time. He was a very uh, not not into trans people, not sure about women. Got some problems with women. Uh, let's just be let's just be upfront with it. Oh, and of course, eh, 
he's really here's here's the great thing about Jordan Peterson. He's he's really sure about race and IQ, which is dumb old debunked pseudoscience. He's really sure. Oh, the race, the race and IQ, we gotta face it. But um, when when scientists around the world get together and say man-made climate change is real and we have to do stuff to stop it as humans, uh, he's not sure about that. Tons of videos with him. We're going overboard with that. Oh, what about the race and IQ stuff? That long debunk old racist crap. Oh, oh no, that's real. That's real though. So yeah, no, I, oh no, he's just a guy who wants you to make your bed and be a good boy. <laughs> that see, if, if he just got his little grift on quietly, fine, go ahead. But when you get into that stuff, you get into this, oh, he just, he's just telling young men to be, to put their little pants, to put their little pants, pantaloons on. To wipe their little, you know, tuchuses and calm down and be good boys. If you when you when you try to frame him as just that, then it kind of pisses me off a little bit. If you try to tell young men not to pity themselves and be losers, if you tell them to make their bed, this is this makes you a Nazi like Red Skull. Tanahasi Coates writing that in a comic book. Our culture, uh, the, the wokeness in comics, by the way, has been going on for a long time. Uh, Mar- uh, DC did this too. DC tried to make Superman into an anti-police figure. They had a Batman comic in which Batman was railing against the cops, not just the corrupt Gotham City cops, but like cops generally and about racial injustice and all this kind of stuff. Marvel has now trotted out a gay teen Captain America. And also, like, this, this is not a surprise, but to have ta Coates mainly... Uh, okay, so then don't read comics, idiot. I mean, look, this is... Okay, uh, let me read you a little thing here. Let's just read a little thing, just for fun. This is kind of like going back into history a little bit. It's kind of fun, uh, if, especially if you like comics. From time to time, we receive letters from readers who wonder why there's so much moralizing in our comic books. They take great pains to point out comics are supposed to be escapist reading and nothing more. But somehow, I can't see it that way. It seems to me that a story without a message, somehow subliminal, is like a man without a, without a soul. Oh, sorry, however subliminal, is like a man without a soul. In fact, even the most escapist literature of all, old-timey fairy tales and heroic legends contained moral and philosophical points of view. At every college campus where I may speak, there's as much discussion of war and peace, civil rights and the so-called youth rebellion. Ooh, Ben Pepino's not going to like that. Oh, what do you think about uh, college people fighting for civil rights? No, 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 Oh my God, he's going crazy. Ben, Ben, stop. Ben, Ben. At every college campus where where I may speak, there's as much discussion of war and peace, civil rights, and the so-called youth rebellion as there is our Marvel mags, per se. Oh, that's kind of adorable, actually. None of us lives in a vacuum. None of us is untouched by the everyday events about us. Events which shape our stories just as they shape our lives. Sure, our tales can be called escapist, but just because something's for fun doesn't mean we have to blanket our brains while we read it. Excelsior! <laughs> Excelsior! Stan Lee. So Stan, Stanley Lee, is his name? His name's Stan Lee Lee. I'm glad he shortened it, to be honest. Hi, my name's Stan Lee Lee. What, your name's Stan Lee? Woody, are you okay? No, it's my last name. What? St- my name's Stan Lee Lee. Okay, just stop. No. I could be wrong. Maybe Stan is short for Stanford. Hey, my name is Stanford Lee. I do comics. Excelsior! I mean, Pepino knows his audience really well because he just somehow just kind of like takes a turn down like a talking about trans stuff. Because the left is always promoting the lie that Republicans are engaged in voter suppression, even though that is obviously not true. <laughs> then she tweeted out, hashtag trans kids are under attack across the country. <laughs> How did we get here from ta Coates comics again? It's his, I don't know. My we, my weird uh, lunatic audience wants to hear me uh, get, really give it to trans people. People have been uh, messaging me to look at this guy, the quartering, another million subscriber guy. Phew, man, I gotta, I gotta cross over to the easy. But uh, somebody also suggested like months ago that I watch that guy Salty Cracker uh, videos, and now we get where the soy Marvel memes come from. This is a, a process of soul searching. 
what are you oriented towards? And the answer could easily be nothing. Well, this is why I produce. Oh, man. This is like. So he, he edited like Thanos crap with Jordan Peterson talking. This is probably like. I mean, this is not even lowbrow culture because I like lowbrow stuff, you know? What would you say? Like, I don't know. Whatever. It, it, John Waters or something. Uh, this is just like boring. It's like, oh, I'm going to take this giant blockbuster Marvel investment, not even a movie, this investment, and uh, do my just do my YouTube over it. <laughs> Produce the future authoring program. You, like, you gotta be oriented. I can't even, I can't, it's too, it's too stupid to sit through, it's too meaningless. I will say, I've never watched this guy's videos. What's going on everyone, Jeremy here from The Quartering, and it would appear that... Until now, but, um, he does seem more stable than that salty cracker guy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just that. Uh... At Jordan Peterson is back in the news, in this case, of course, it is the far left... Uh, comparing him to uh, Red. This honestly, I watched this whole video because people have been asking me, like, "Oh, you should watch this good guy, the quartering," and um, it it feels like I am going back like five years or six years on YouTube watching this guy. He's still still squeezing this kind of content, you know. Whoever does that should be okay. That makes sense. I started off this video of like. This guy seems just like a, a sort of like a goofball, like kind of a just like a somebody who you'd be in like a, I don't know, like a community college class with. And you're just like, oh, it's like a innocent dummy who likes comics or something. But then it takes like a little bit of a weird turn here. You know, when you're watching this video, you realize. They, like cheerleading the smearing of, of his character. Like you don't have to read Jordan Peterson's books, um, you know. Subtle, Mar you see, subtle Marvel, real smooth, and people say Star Wars is bad. Well, that's exactly it. I mean, these people hate you. They and and I really hope that you know when you're watching this video, you realize that that they have a deep rooted hatred for you, and that's why no one's buying these comic books. Uh oh, uh oh, who's who's they, and how do they hate you? So it's not just a dude putting his opinion in a comic. It's they, they hate you. They want to keep you down. They want to keep, that's where we get into, uh-oh, uh-oh. What? What? Territory. The other thing that's like so obvious and funny about this is you walk into a comic book store today. You have your choice of like 10 Brazilian comics to choose from. Again, you could go get like whatever 20 Brubaker comics you want or whatever sort of, um, you know, inane Spider-Man thing or the whole, oh, what's the Hulk up to? Oh, the Hulk, Hulk's got a girlfriend now or whatever. There's like a million comics <laughs> and these are the guys who like the free, free choice. We need free choice. Free, the free market needs to provide all the choices. You know, that's like always, uh, they're going on about that all the time. And so that happens and they're like, no, no, no. He put his, he said his opinion. That means they hate you. That means someone hates you. If some guy thinks, thinks the reasonable thought of like, yeah, some of Jordan Peterson's ideas are pretty, uh, pretty uh, sick, are pretty sick and weird. And it's pretty obvious if you watch like, 10 of his YouTube videos. It's like the most painfully obvious thing. <laughs> I feel like I honestly am like making fun of children at this point, right? Like the people who watch these videos and make these videos, it's just kind of like, you know, they're, they're not really, they're not, it's not gonna, it's not gonna get through a lot of these people. They're not gonna stumble on this and be like, oh, this, some good points here. This is more of like, they're, they're pretty emotionally driven. And then you get a guy out here saying, they hate, they, who's they? They hate you. Uh, stick it to uh, their political rivals or po political adversaries. These people get into comics, not because they love comics or because they want to draw good books or because they love the characters or because they want to prolong the legacy of great characters. They get into comic books to co-opt them and uh, use them to push their own political ideology. <laughs> Again, this guy has been doing this captain america run for two years three years 
Ta-Nehisi Coates with this Captain America thing. <laughs> and he even said that he was basing it off of the Brubaker comics. And they're like, he doesn't even care. He's been doing this for three years because he does, doesn't care or something. He just wants to sho shove his ideas in there for three years. <laughs> he doesn't care about comics. No, like you, dummy, you idiot. You don't care about comics. Like, if you look at the background, this is somebody who, like, I, like, I don't even know, like, why, why these people, like, what these people find interesting about, like, comics or, like, comic characters. Like, it's the most boring version of liking that stuff. If you look all the all the crap in his background and the soy uh, Marvel Endgame memes, it's like, what, like, why would that even be attractive? Like, these characters are templates. Um, I want them to be as sort of boring as possible. Boring and plain as possible, with no interesting spin on them whatsoever. <laughs> you you don't like comics, dummy. So, there you go. Just dummies being dumb. And uh, a real stupid story. To be honest, like, part of why I wanted to do this is because uh, I was talking to uh, somebody about, like, the, some Steven Crowder thing where he's doing something where somebody kneeled on his neck or something. I'm like, you know what? I'm probably not going to do another Steven Crowder video because uh, D Soy P.T. Barnum, boring, boring, lame, not fun P.T. Barnum is like just like any video about him. It's like that's sort of like what he's going for. Like just somebody talk about me, please. Please, somebody don't let can't 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 sleep. Can't sleep. Can't let people not get getting, getting clicks and talking about me. No attention is bad attention. Da, 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 da. Hey, go to sleep, man. No, 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 no. So I'm, I'm kind of feel like I'm done. I'm like feeding into that kind of boring nonsense with that guy. So uh, there you go. Dummies being dumb, not even understanding uh, what I consider to be a, a great art and a great uh, thing of comics, making it boring, making it dumb, and uh, just saying dumb things that they read on some uh, stupid website about. So this is what we look at on my channel. And please... Flush yourself. Bye bye. Hey everybody, and thanks so much for watching this video. Like all the other YouTube and podcast perverts, I now have a Patreon. Here you can get daily access to the audio only feed. And every week on this Patreon, I'm uploading two exclusive Patreon exclusive shows. They're like real shows, more produced, more edited. One of them is a behind the scenes show where I reveal all the secrets and YouTube scams that I'm doing. And the other one, I just reveal my innermost dark, cringe secrets. As well as deep dive video essays and more. And at the top level, you can even become a producer of the show and get your name handwritten, hand art, art, hand drawn at the end of every episode. So if that's something that you are interested in, um, check it out. On Patreon. Uh, I'll put a link in the, what is the thing called in the? the description, I guess. So thank you so much, even if you don't. Thanks for watching this video. I know it's hard to get through these things, but um, I appreciate you. This show would be absolute garbage without the producers, J.S. Trost, also known as The Bolt Cutter. Bolt Cutter. Zero oh seven x Yeah. And we'll get Michael McTie. Rue Kazoo. Kazoo. Shannon Bad Barbie Williams. Anna. <laughs> Ben Kosky, Ass McBlast, McBlast, E. Gregory Hutto, what, what? Scott, let me tell you something, no, Castle, Re, Re, Rerun 64, 64, Mr. Feeny, Feeny, Jamie and I may have a disagreement with Sam Cedar's pause button, pause button, Jenny Hart, hey, Jenny Hart, it's me, oh, she just ignored me, Winter the Muscular, Ethan Weaver, Weaver, Vince Barbosa. He is pure ideology at its purest. Crouching Tiger, flushing toilets. Elias Christo, the guy from the hamburger train. Cece LeBlanc, LeBlanc. Nez, Nez, Interlinks. Victor Sonny Duran. Kyle, high level ideas. Hopper, Irvi, Albert Ellers, Ood, Kitty Hooch. Hi, I'm Kitty Hooch. 
Abby, I don't want cowards teaching my kid green. Tristan, Dom, Dom, Dominic, Guzman, 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 Jane Spade, Jessica, a lot of problems stepping off. King Friday, day. <laughs> Laura, Campbell, Rajawa, Nefatsu, Gustav, Van Betten, 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 Camilla. Yo, yo, young Slampy, Brian Hernandez, CS. Hey, is that CS? I don't know. Oh wait, yeah, it is CS. Okay, great. Thugs and kisses denigrates your dude. He's denigrating that dude. Blister thumb, thumb, thumb. Brie, Brie, Brie Gutierrez, Brie Gutierrez. Pick, pick, pixels green. Pick, pick, pick green. green. Old man Shia. Shia. And our favorite name so far, Hard Farter. I hope you're okay, Hard Farter. That sounds the muscular class like a problem, to be honest. <laughs> and a very special thanks to Mr. Gorth. Micah G. Mike Mort Calypso. Roberto Vera. Who's that? What? Oh, it's Carl Hachmuth. Or Hachmuth. I don't know, Carl. Tell me how to say it. Love you! Terza. And don't cancel me for... I'm just reading a name, okay? Tardmaster. Tardmaster. Stealion Annihilate. Annihilate. And special guest, Stabster Bait. Kevin Jigaleski. Oh, who's that? Oh, it's Mac. It's Mac. You know it's Mac. You can tell it's him. Krill Will. And we got D Pad Chad. Mm hmm. Burn Dubuel. Jake T. Jake T. Sebastian Delgadillo. Charlotte Glass. CEO of the muscular, the muscular class. class. Beth Van Diver. Diver. I'm sorry about that, Beth. You know I love you. Ray Anthony Cox. Eden Joy. Derek Stoker. Apollo Crow. Liz. Martin Lee. Chelsea G. Derek. Jesus Christ. Wilson. Matt Rowe. Thank you to these beautiful, gorgeous, muscular, soaped up showering probably 10 to 11 times a day producers.